Hello and welcome to the upload for Monday the 2nd of July. Today, we wrap up everything that happened over the weekend. First up, and it looks like Star Wars Battlefront 2 has hammered the final nail into its carbonite coffin. It's no good to me dead. It's... not. The already controversial game has come under further heat upon the release of its planned roadmap. July and August will see minor improvements, but none of the big Clone Wars reveals from E3 have a set release date. Fall will see the release of Obi-Wan and General Grievous, with more empty promises littered throughout. And the most annoying thing, the map, the planet, Geonosis, won't arrive until winter. With the player base pretty drained, I can't see many people sticking around for these updates, but moving on to something pretty silly, Google wants you to play a game in a new tab. As part of an industry-wide push towards game streaming, Google is reportedly working on a new digital game console. This would be in the form of a streaming platform codenamed Yeti. Reportedly, it will work similar to Nvidia's GeForce Now, which allows PC gamers with low-end PCs to stream and play games, whilst remote PCs take the core of the graphical grunt. Info on Google's streaming service is pretty scarce, but it does continue the trend of streaming over purchasing of content. But moving on to a stream that might not be stolen, Warner Brothers has hit back at Bethesda over their Westworld Sue. Last week, I gave you the deets that Bethesda had filed a report against Warner Brothers Game over the use of their base code of Fallout Shelter, as well as general copyrighted designs and mechanics. Warner Brothers have since returned with a statement claiming the report's comments are as surprising as they are unsubstantiated. What a big word to use. They then went on to confirm that they use no code from the Fallout Shelter title and that any and all claims Bethesda placed are baseless. This could all be fluff from Warner Brothers, but it does put into question whether big companies are a bit of a bully when it comes to IP. Though the case has been dropped, PUBG tried to sue Fortnite on a pretty thin claim and Bethesda themselves forced Mojang's scrolls to change their name. There's been no further clarification on if the case will move forward, but what do you think about this whole IP drama that big companies keep stirring up? Let me know down in the comments. But did you spend $16 on a flip grip? Because you might need another 20. Nyko have put together an unofficial mini cardboard arcade machine for your Switch. The third party peripheral manufacturer have made such madness as the type pad for your controllers, as well as the incredible rechargeable docking kit for the Switch. So the Pixel Quest arcade machine is somewhere in between those in terms of usability. Nyko have given the kit a planned release date of November 27th this year. Moving on to Shock Horror Fortnite, another mysterious event has taken place. Players have been hearing echoing alarms all around the map for a few weeks and finally, all was revealed. Epic Games alerted players to be in-game at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time to see the event, and sure enough, a missile was launched into Fortnite's cloudy sky. This is a pretty impressive moment for Fortnite, a visible, unique moment that players could revel in. And some players paid for it with their lives. <laughs> But, of course, the obvious question is, where is this leading with the game? Obviously, it's in the game's future, and it will probably be a bit of a teaser for the fifth season of the game's Battle Pass. Some have speculated the villains of Fortnite are planning to destroy the island. However, a leaked map from Season 5 revealed some locations will be seeing a bit of an upgrade. So I guess the true plot will be revealed shortly, but back to players who paid with their lives. <laughs> So as everyone sat and enjoyed the Fortnite missile launch, as families stood on their hastily crafted wooden steps, 12 year olds turned down their rage meter for a few moments. One dick just had to go and ruin it by chopping the lower supports of the staircase, 48 people fell to their deaths. The player, Elemental Ray, had a 0.47 kill to death ratio. In this one action, however, he set a world record for the highest number of kills in a solo match. What a dick, but that is all the gaming news I have for you today. Remember, if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button and like, wherever those are. I don't know where they are, but do those things for more stuff. And jump on over and give our Facebook and Instagram pages their respective followables. Also, we have a Patreon. There's 11 people that have dropped by and now dropped into our super secret Discord. Just $2 will get you in there, but remember, it's your money. Don't donate if you don't have $2 to spare. Until the next video, the Doctor of Who is out. There's also two videos up there that you can watch. You can subscribe over there, and uh, you can have a lovely day if you eat an apple. If you eat an apple, you'll be really helpful. Unless you're allergic to apples. That'd suck, because I think apples is probably my favorite fruit. It's definitely not bananas, though. I put one bite of that thing, and it's like, Whoa!